Spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But the Pharisees with some scribes who had, not, who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did I say a prophesy about you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All of these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In uh, today's passage, we see uh, the Pharisees and scribes confronting Jesus because his disciples did not wash their hands before eating. Now, washing of hands is actually the proper thing to do. This is how we were trained by our parents since we were young kids. Proper hygiene, sanitize your hands, especially now during this pandemic. Now listen, this is not about hygiene, by the way, but about ceremonial or ritual purity. This has nothing to do with germs or virus. The people at the time had no concept of virus and germs. So this is not about good physical hygiene, but about religious or spiritual hygiene. The Jews took their purity law seriously. And purity law is obsessed with separating what belongs to God and what doesn't belong to the Lord. What is holy and unholy. What is pure and impure. What is clean and unclean. They will not be allowed uh, uh, what is clean and unclean. What is proper for worship and what is not proper for worship. And they do not mix. So if you're pure and holy, avoid being tainted by impure and unholy things. That's the essence of purity law in, uh, 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 for the Jews. Because if they come into contact with impure or unholy things, then they will not be allowed to enter the temple for worship. That's why there is a ceremonial washing. If you come from the marketplace, you do a ceremonial washing before you eat. No? 
and they have listed a lot of unclean things which can make them ritually unclean. You can check especially chapter 11 of Leviticus. Animals, items, and of the things that you should not touch and that you should not take in. William Barclay says beautifully in the description of this, Sabinya, a thing might in the ordinary sense be completely clean and yet in the legal sense be unclean. Certain animals were unclean. A woman after childbirth was unclean. A leper was unclean. Anyone who touched a dead body was unclean. And anyone who had so become unclean made unclean anything he in turn touched. A Gentile was unclean. Food touched by a Gentile was unclean. Any vessel touched by a Gentile was unclean. So then, when a strict Jew returned from the marketplace, he immersed his whole body in, wa in clean water to take away the taint he might have acquired while he was in the marketplace or outside the house. So essentially, what you touch, what you eat, what you take in from outside, can all make you impure. Impurity for the Jews at the time is affected through external contact. Now Jesus said something revolutionary here. He told them in this passage, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. What defiles you is what comes from within, not what comes from the outside. What defiles you is what is in your heart. Jesus adds, from within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. So what is within you is what defiles a person spiritually, not what comes from the outside. If your heart is full of trash, that will defile you. And take note, it will also show and defile everything that comes into contact with you. If you're full of trust inside, you will throw that trust from within you to other people. In the seminary, there was this one uh, seminarian who had problems maintaining friendship. He had several plan friends, yet they all did not last. He would usually blame his friends that these friends of his were immature, selfish, and they did not know how to handle friendship. So someone told him to find a friend in the seminary who was kind and patient and understanding no, of him. Yet kahit yung pinakababait ng seminarista, hindi rin siya natagalan. Until in their spiritual pastoral year, a uh, spiritual pastoral year is a stage in the seminary formation that is non-academic. So you just uh, focus spiritually on yourself and then uh, uh, do some processing and uh, to, to get to know you, yourself better so that you'll be, you'll be an effective minister to address issues uh, right deep within you. And so until their spirit, spiritual pastoral year, this seminarian was able to take a good look at his inner dynamics. And he discovered he was full of resentment, anger, bitterness, and hatred in his heart because he grew up in a dysfunctional family that he really did not experience any love or tenderness or even attention as a child from his parents. 
So everything inside him was just anger and resentment and envy and all trash. Everything inside him was all trash. Puro basura siya sa loob. Kaya lahat ng basura niya sa loob, iyan yung itinatapon niya sa mga tao na nagiging kaibigan niya. No? Tinatapunan ng basura galing sa loob. And he defiled all his friendships. In time, his deep hurts were addressed. His heart was purified. Only then was he able to enter into healthy friendships. So again, Jesus says, nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. So malaking tanong, may mga basura ba sa puso nyo? Ask God to clean it. Matthew 5 verse 8, Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Amen. Gising ka ba? Magandang araw po sa inyo. Kape at pandasal na po tayo. Ito po si Cardinal Chito Tagle. Noong mga bata pa kami, gumagala sa buong bahay ang aming lola sa tuhod kapag gabi. Lalapitan ng bawat natutulog, kakalapitin at tatanungin, Natutulog ka na ba? Gising ka pa? Hindi mo alam kung gusto niyang matulog ka o manatiling gising. Sa isang banda, dapat lagi tayong gising. Gising ang diwa upang marinig ang tinig ng Diyos. Maramdaman ang kanyang dampi. Sundan ang kanyang paanyaya. Sayang kung sa pagdaan niya, tulog tayo at hindi siya pansinin. Sa panahon ngayon ng pagkalito at problema, higit na makakatulong ang taong gising na kumikilatis kaysa taong maingay pero tulog naman pala. O Diyos, manatili na wa kaming mulat at gising para sa iyo. Amen. Every single day.